Gaming Bolt presents 15 games of 2018 that can provide you with over 100 hours of gameplay. Games are becoming increasingly bigger and more expansive, as each developer wants their game to be the only one you spend any time on. Keeping that in mind, 2018 has multiple games that you can spend dozens of hours on, coming as no surprise to anybody. But there are some that are more loaded with a sea of content than others, ones that you can get lost in for countless hours on end. In this feature, we're going to take a look at 15 games that came out this year that can easily provide you with over 100 hours of gameplay. Assassin's Creed Odyssey Ubisoft went the full RPG route with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and in doing so, made sure that the Origins formula that was already brimming with content would become even more packed. Ancient Greece is an astoundingly large setting, full of beautiful locations to discover and sights to see, with a plethora of quests and side quests waiting for you around every corner. The Aegean Sea is a vast and open environment for you to sail about in, engage in naval battles, and dive underwater to discover hidden secrets. The cultist system is intricate and expansive, and it's very easy to get lost in the loop of identifying targets and tracking them down before moving on to the next one. On top of that, there's tons of smaller activities to indulge in, such as killing mercenaries, gathering loot, upgrading your ship, clearing out forts and fortresses, and so, so much more. Red Dead Redemption 2 Rockstar are often called the kings of the open world genre, and with Red Dead Redemption 2, they firmly established just why that is the case. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game that expertly balances freeform sandbox gameplay and tight storytelling, and delivers a campaign that can take anywhere between 40 to 60 hours to complete, and that's just if you beeline straight to the finish and ignore everything else along the way. The game is also overflowing with a large number of side quests and quest lines, many of which stand shoulder to shoulder with the main campaign itself in terms of writing and quality, while other side activities such as collecting bounties or diving deep into the game's intricate hunting mechanics are time sinks in their own right. Then there's the fact that this is a deeply dynamic and reactive world, and simply existing in it and messing with its systems is an absolute blast. All of which is to say that you can spend dozens upon dozens of hours playing Red Dead Redemption 2 without ever really getting bored. Forza Horizon 4 With each new Forza Horizon title, Playground Games keep on cementing themselves as masters of their craft and as a studio that only gets better and better with each game. Forza Horizon 4 is undoubtedly the best game that they've ever made. It's huge and it's teeming with content. The game boasts of a great variety of races and events that you can take part in, many of which can be delightfully inventive and over the top. There's also properties to locate and buy, speed traps to zip through, showcase events to work towards, while the top-notch and near-perfect driving make the simple act of getting from point A to point B more enjoyable than it should be. The world design is also excellent, with the changing of seasons adding an unprecedented level of dynamism to it all. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee The moment you step into a Pokemon game, you know you're committing to a long-time investment. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have a long campaign, like all Pokemon games do, but even once you're done with it, there's just so much else to do. The core hook of Gotta Catch Em All has enraptured players for over two decades, and it continues to do so even now. Let's Go, just like any other Pokemon game, can sink its claws into you for dozens upon dozens of hours as you scour all over Kanto in an attempt to fill out your Pokedex. What's even better is that once you're done, if you're done, there's over 150 master trainers to hunt down and defeat in battle. Octopath Traveler Octopath Traveler is a dream come true for those who have been yearning for a classic 16-bit JRPG and emulates those experiences in tons of ways, its fragmented story and storytelling notwithstanding. It's not a huge open-world game, but then again, not every game has to be to be able to provide players with countless hours of gameplay. Its campaign is easily 60 hours long, and depending on how much you grind and what pace you set for yourself, it can easily go up to as high as 70. There's also plenty of optional quests, dungeons, and bosses in the game, and all in all, Octopath Traveler can keep you busy for a long, long time. Just Cause 4 Just Cause 4, in true Just Cause fashion, is the perfect sandbox for chaos and mindless fun. Sure, it has a lengthy campaign that'll keep you busy for a solid amount of time, but its open-world sandbox is really what encourages countless hours of gameplay. 
Combining Rico's wingsuit and parachute in a fast and slick traversal system with the brand of chaotic action that the series is known for, complete with airlifters, jetpacks, grappling hooks, and insane weapons is what Just Cause 4 is really all about. While experimenting with and playing around with its explosive weather system mechanics also never gets old. It's all too easy to spend tens and tens of hours just experimenting with, combining all of the tools in your arsenal to see what sort of havoc you can cause in the open world. Monster Hunter World Monster Hunter games, by their very definition, are experiences that not only encourage, but demand that players pour huge amounts of time into. Monster Hunter World is no different. Though it doesn't have the absolutely bonkers roster of monsters, at least in terms of quantity, that its direct predecessor did, the quality of its maps, the monsters themselves, and the ecosystems in all of the locations make every trek from the hub out into the wilds an absolute blast. Then there's the fact that, just like any other Monster Hunter game, there's that unbelievably addictive and compelling central loop of constantly going out to defeat monsters to collect better loot, to craft better gear, which then you would use to hunt down tougher monsters for even better loot, and so on, and so on. But last but not least, Capcom have also supported Monster Hunter World decently since its launch, with frequent event quests that bring new content and rarely ever disappoint, and best of all, are absolutely free. Fallout 76 There's a lot that's wrong with Fallout 76. The state that it launched in, with countless bugs and pervasive performance issues, isn't something that anyone expects to see in a full-price AAA release, while other, deeper issues such as lack of human NPCs also hurt the game in significant ways. But there's enjoyment to be had in Fallout 76, at least if you're playing with friends. Sure, those issues still exist even if you do that, but exploring the large open world, tracking down codes to launch nukes, building and expanding your camp, and venturing out into the wasteland to collect more and better loot is something that you can get lots of hours of enjoyment out of, if you manage to get past the initial, and admittedly quite heavy, barrier. No Man's Sky Next no Man's Sky was a controversial game when it first launched, to say the very least, but this year it got a very major update in the form of Next, which added a lot of the things that the developers had promised the game would have back before it first released. In its current form, No Man's Sky provides players with multiplayer, deeper base building, underwater exploration, and all around just more incentive to explore its vast universe. Sure, when you really get down to it, the game is still quite grindy and prone to vast stretches of emptiness the way that it was before but significant improvements have been made and make it a much better and more compelling experience. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Treyarch's decision to remove the single-player campaign from Call of Duty Black Ops 4 was a huge gamble, but it's one that ultimately paid off. The mode that replaced the campaign, Blackout, is perhaps the best rendition of the widely popular battle royale genre in the market, or close to it at the very least, and even by itself, it's addictive enough to keep you hooked for countless hours. But Blackout, of course, isn't all there is. There's also zombies, bigger and more ambitious than ever before, in a mode that, if you've been a fan of in the past, is not going to disappoint you. And then there's the traditional multiplayer component, which is, in true Call of Duty fashion, incredibly fun, and though not without its flaws, one that can easily get its hooks into you. Warhammer Vermintide 2 There's really no definitive way to say how much gameplay time you can get out of Vermintide 2. If you just play through its main story and do nothing else, it won't even get close to 100 hours. If, however, you get addicted to its incredible co-op horde gameplay, then there's no limit to how much time you'll put into it. Multiple classes, variants, and skill trees serve as excellent incentive for players to really get into the grind, which admittedly may not be to everyone's tastes, while the constant hunt for loot is inherently addictive as well. Sea of Thieves Sea of Thieves is one of those games that had a rough launch and received a lot of justified criticisms at the time of its release, but managed to quickly turn things around. It's now at a point where, thanks to regular and meaty updates by Rare, it is genuinely a good game, one that has the mechanics and depth of content to do justice to its undeniably cool premise. Sailing the high seas with your crew on your pirate ship as you constantly search the world for booty is something that sounds incredible even if you never play the game, but when you do play it, you realize that Sea of Thieves executes that very, very well. So well, in fact, that it's entirely feasible and even likely that you'll end up spending several dozens of hours playing the game, exploring its seas, its uncharted islands, its ports and towns, ever in search of that elusive horizon. 
Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age Dragon Quest XI isn't an open world game per se, but boy, it's massive. Massive not in terms of the locations you'll visit, but in terms of just how long its main story is. It can easily take you 60 hours just to get to the end credits, except that's not even the game's true ending. Calling everything that happens afterwards post-game wouldn't really be doing justice to it because of how long, meaty, amazing, and important it is to understanding the larger story. The best part about all of this is that in spite of being an extremely long game, Dragon Quest XI doesn't ever feel like it's dragging, and constantly keeps moving along at a brisk pace, throwing new and interesting things at players before anything even gets close to overstaying its welcome. Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom was a game that countless people had been fervently looking forward to for a long time, ever since its predecessor launched on the PS3 and captured millions of hearts with its undeniable charm, and it's fair to say that the wait for the sequel paid off. The story and characters may not have been as compelling as they were in its predecessor, but this is still an absolutely massive game that sucks you right in from the word go and doesn't let up. Its large, sprawling adventure is a very engrossing one, and though it isn't as long as, say, something like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Fallout 76, it does enough on the side that you can pour even more of your life into, chief among those being the surprisingly engaging kingdom-building system. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Super Smash Bros. games aren't time sinks in the sense that they are exceedingly long to finish, but more because of the fact that they're thoroughly addictive and have strong enough gameplay loops and moment-to-moment -moment gameplay that you can't help but keep coming back to them. All of that is truer for Ultimate than it has been for any other Smash game, while it's also just bursting at the seams with a sea of meaningful content. Playing against your friends both locally or online is something that you can spend countless hours doing, while just playing the game by yourself is just as engaging. There's also World of Light, a proper, full-fledged campaign, not to mention a plethora of other modes for you to dabble in. Most importantly, there are over 70 characters and 100 stages to master, and I haven't even gotten into unlocking ancillary content. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.